In the 19th century, Chenonceau stayed quietly in the Dupin family up to 1864. Then it was bought by the millionaire Madame Marguerite Pelouse Wilson for 850,000 francs. With Madame Pelouse, the fortunes of the castle were once again in the hands of an energetic and dedicated woman. In the tradition of Catherine de' Medici, Madame Pelouse spended enormous sums of money on lavish parties. For instance, to amuse her guests, she brought to Chenonceau an authentic Venetian gondola with its gondolier. It seems that, just like Catherine de' Medici, a deep passion of her laid within architecture. For more than ten years, from 1867 to 1878, Madame Pelouse oversaw what is called the restoration of the castle, giving it the appearance which it presumably had at the beginning of the 16th century, the time of Thomas Bouillet and his wife Catherine Brissonnet. This enterprise might be understood in the light of the zeitgeist of the time, in which there was a strong recourse to historical and natural aspects of life. Architects reverted to medieval forms of building, in particular the Gothic style, which flourished during the high and late medieval period. Here we see France's first prominent neo-Gothic church, designed, not accidentally, by an architect of German origin, François-Christian Gau. The design was significantly modified by Gau's assistant, Théodore Ballu. The Gothic revival was paralleled and supported by Romanticism, a complex movement in the visual arts, music and literature. One of the characteristics of this movement is the sensibility for the picturesque qualities of culture and nature. This new aesthetic ideal can be found in many paintings of ruins representing a certain kind of beauty which is agreeable in a picture. Picturesque in architecture is brought to the summit by this castle, called the Swallow's Nest, near Yalta, built in 1912 in neo-Gothic style. To bring Chenonceau back to its original appearance, Many of the alterations carried out by Catherine de' Medici had to be removed. Madame Pelouse entrusted the architect Félix Roguet with this task. Roguet was a disciple of the influential French architect Eugène Violette le Duc, who was a central figure in the Gothic revival in France. He was famous for his controversial historical restorations of medieval churches and castles. These restorations often did not aim so much at accurately recreating a historical situation as at creating a perfect building of medieval style.
For the restoration of Carcassonne, for instance, he designs roofs of pointed cones and put grey slates on them, where local practice was traditionally of tile roofing and low slopes, as in this region snow was very seldom. Modern conservation practice finds Fiolet Le Duc's restorations too free, too personal, too interpretive. The past can never be faithfully recreated and, in removing layers of history from a building, information and age value are also removed, which can never be recreated. Even Fiolet Le Duc wrote, Restoration is a means to re-establish a building to a finished state, which may in fact never have actually existed at any given time. But you must keep in mind that many of the monuments Violet Le Duc restored would have otherwise been lost. So, in the romantic spirit of the times, architect Roguet removed from Chenonceau several of Catherine de Medici's additions to the exterior and renewed the interior. In particular, the north facade, where the entrance doors was modified. Catherine de Medici had doubled the windows and had placed Atlantis and Caritids between them. Atlantis and Caritids are sculpted male and female figures, serving as an architectural support, taking the place of a column. These double window openings were remerged to single openings and the sculpted figures were removed. They were relocated to the park and now stand behind the labyrinth. This hatch labyrinth, consisting of 2,000 ewes, is recently rebuilt in the spirit of Catherine de Medici's time and according to an Italian plan dating from 1720. Actually not consistent, but of course comprehensible, Madame Pelouse kept intact Catherine's major alteration to the castle, the gallery across the river. Here we see the metamorphosis of the east side of the castle. Striking are the modifications to the chimneys on the roof. Also, the interior was restored, or better perhaps, renovated, according to the insight of the 19th century. This is the present day hall of the second floor. The floor stones are Renaissance. Also, the kitchen was restored. And the staircase. There are still unique decorative details from the 17th century like this window frame, supported by two carved caryatids. Finally, the avenue leading to the chateau was planted out with trees. Mm -hmm.